All right, everybody, welcome today to our webinar. Um, I'm Kevin Weitzel with Outhouse. We do these periodically. We cover various subjects, typically on the digital marketing side of things, because I'm also the co-host of the Home Builder Digital Marketing Podcast with Greg, Bla Greg Brave Blue Tangerine. Uh, but uh, some of you that have seen me out in the public or at IBS or anywhere else or on some of my other webinars know that I usually have great big sideburns. And uh, I know they're silly. I get it. I know that they're not the normal thing to put on your face, but I did eight years in the Marine Corps and I shaved every day and I hated shaving every single day. So the monotony of doing the same thing the same way every single day drove me nuts. So I decided when I got out that I was just gonna start shaving. And when I started shaving, or when I uh, stopped shaving, excuse me. And when I got out, I decided that, you know what? I'm gonna stop shaving. I'm gonna play with this facial hair because I grow it like a weed. Uh, like I've already got a five o'clock shadow and I just shaved this morning. Anyway. So I've done the Chaplin, not the Hitler. I've done the uh, 70s stash. I've done the porn stash. I've done the Fu Manchu, a soul patch, a goatee, the Amish jawbone, and of course the sideburns. The sideburns stuck mainly out of necessity because I itch really bad around my mouth if I grow facial hair around my mouth. So long story short, why did I bring that up? I brought this up for two reasons. One is that my mother told me, Kevin, I love your face when it's shaved. So do me a favor as my most beloved son, her favorite child. And I am, of course, come on, how could I not be? Shave at least once a year so you don't look like a dirt bag. So lo and behold, I shave. Anyway, uh, it's growing back in, it'll grow back in this coming week. Uh, but why are we here today? We're here today to talk about sales centers or maybe differently, centers. You know, let's eliminate that word sales out of there and, and maybe our, our guests will tell us why. But who do we have on the call today? We have former marketing manager of Richmond American Homes, VP marketing and branding over at Oakwood Homes. We have the chief marketing officer at 68 Ventures and the chief marketing officer at Truland Homes. And this is just touching on a couple of different things. She's the uh, current member of the advisory board at Zonda. And she's also a current uh, uh, board member on the visionary council at Atlas RTX. On top of that, if that's not enough, not just being an expert in marketing, she decided to take a leap of faith and open her own agency called Evolution, uh, Evolution Marketing. So my guest today, Jennifer Cooper. Jennifer, how are you? I am good. Thanks for having me today. You Absolutely. make me sound so important. <laughs> you are important. You're an industry expert, a well-respected industry expert. Your name comes up in many, many circles. So uh, yeah, so yeah. We're going to be talking about these sales centers today. Sales centers. I'm going to put that in, in air quotes. Since I'm not yeah. on a podcast, I can use air quotes. And people you, see we it. can use them all day. <laughs> I can use them all day. Well, um, anyway, um, why is this topic important and what are we going to be talking about? And I guess we can go live with, uh, as soon as you want, we can go live with the slides whenever Jim yeah. is ready. Yeah, you can go ahead and. Yeah, Jim, go ahead and drop up. those slides in, please. Power them up. Maybe. <laughs> technical difficulties <coughs> all right i'm going to apologize i'm fighting a cold that my loving family shared with me today so i'm going to do my best um i am not a smoker but i kind of sound like it <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah sales office of the future is an area i am if you know me if you've met me if you've worked with me you know i am so passionate about it i think it is such an important place uh, for our customers to meet us in the home buying journey. We've gone so virtual and so digital today, but having a place to connect with customers and really thinking through the customer journey is an area that I will talk about, preach about, um, own and love on it all day long. So I was excited that Kevin was open to talking about this, um, this topic. And also as a pre just to preface, because you're going to see some other branding in here as part of my consulting uh, one of my exclusive partners is with Builders Design, the interior design company. I've worked with them um, in a client relationship for a couple of years, and I'm now spending a lion's share of my time helping them build out this concept. Took my love for, for sales offices and working with an interior design firm that's also very innovative and helping uh, other builders take their concepts to the next level. So you're going to see some of that branding in here. So you're like, who is she? Um, well, I mean, and, and you, we're in good company with them. I mean, Joe Duffus is an industry expert as well. So, I mean, his, yes. his insight is, is definitely 
Garvey yeah. was expert. I've been learning about model merchandising from one of the best, and it's an area that I just personally love. So you're going to see some, a little bit of commentary from there, and, and Joe and I are really tag teaming on this concept as much as we can to get people excited, right? It's exciting to be in home building, so we want to keep that going. So that's just a little bit of background about why um, you know, we're talking about this today. So sales ops of the future, if we go to the first slide, uh, you'll see that we've we've cut out the, the sales. You saw that in the intro uh, for the webinar promotion. It's not about selling, right? It's about a, home, a homeowner doesn't come in and say, please sell to me. I'm ready to be sold to you right now. This is awesome. They're looking for how is this, this location going to tie to me? So let's start this conversation by saying, let's change up the word. Let's change up the dialect. Think about an experience center, and the, these are just some brain brain uh, storm terms. Come up with your own, but a collaboration hub, home discovery place, a community room, a bespoke zone. Bespoke is a kind of a really trending word right now. It's all about curating your own place. And think about what your builder's brand looks like and what your builder journey looks like in the community, the communities, or the master plan that you're building. But let's like change the tape on the word sales from the very beginning. Okay. So, so let me ask you this. Uh, I assume we want to go to the next slide, but let me ask you this. So are you suggesting that maybe we shouldn't consider that, uh, or we, that we should consider that the current sales trap that we have, which is come into this little fence zone of the model home, you must travel through the little garage sales office before entering the other models? Is that, or you're saying that that might be a strategic mistake in today's well, world? Trap fences just have a weird psychology on the brain. And I think more and more builders, smart builders have started to see that. I'm seeing less and less trap fences. Um, and yeah, we're, we're changing the tape on what is the experience. And the whole part of today's conversation is to not only talk about what's trending and to not only talk about the technology that's staring us in the face, but to really start thinking outside of the box. So some ideas that we're gonna talk about are like really big. And some we could, you know, bite the elephant one one bite at a time. So I love that you said trap fences down. Let's not trap people into buying a seven hundred thousand dollar house because you know that's basically where prices are. <laughs> what what motivation does a builder even have to to push the bar, change the envelope, or the design of what they already have currently? I mean, they, well, that's how they've I, been doing it for decades. They have been doing it for decades, but it doesn't mean it's right. And as we're gonna talk about today, as consumers are consumer of all things and they're getting experiences and different, um, basically just different experiences from different buying realms, they're gonna to start to want something different. And that's that's what I'm challenging. Could, could we still sell homes the same way we have? Yes. But if you wanna be competitive, you wanna be future thinking, and even wanna just look at new ways to offer your product to an up, up and coming generation that's gonna have completely different wants and needs, like my son, when he goes to buy a house, I don't even know like what his expectations are. He's seven compared to what you and I maybe have gone through, seen our parents go through. It will be changed. And the young, young generation of marketers right now have the opportunity to look at how it is versus how it was versus where it's going. That, that It's really preparing for the future. Gotcha. Good question. Uh, I like good questions. Um, <laughs> So, you know, pondering this, the sales center is not just about the transaction, you know, more and more consumers today are looking for, for meaning in 2022. You know, it's been a totally chaotic world with COVID and shoppers just aren't in, in general, when I say shoppers, shoppers or consumers aren't just looking for products. They're looking for a deeper meaning, a deep, a deeper meaning in their experience, expression of belonging and articulation of their place in this world. A lot of that has been from all the time we had to be home during COVID, thinking about what, what do I want out of life? And that's gonna to transcend to where do I live? So they're interested in a pursuit of purpose, an attention economy, like a new wave of well-being, um, inclusive beauty and curated online self. These are all things that are in a consumer's bubble of areas that are, that are, that are um, interesting and experiences that, that they're having. So we've got to look at that and can't just say, we sell homes over here, but everything you else you do and you experience and you buy is over here. That's why we need to start saying we're not just selling and it's not just about a transaction. Okay. Right. We're having so, one small little technical issue okay. uh, that Jim is going to take care of right now. 
That's okay. So you're, we're just going to see your big, beautiful face and my clean shaven That's fine. Face. I can keep talking. I just, again, sorry for my scrappy voice today. Um, so we also want to be rethinking spaces. So when you're thinking about the competition, you know, our market's been saturated with change in demand. We've been living high off the hog for the last couple of years. Uh, a lot of change in supply, but how are you going to shine value on your offerings now that the market is settling? Now that people need to say, can I afford interest rates? Am I willing to wait for, um, for a supply to be back to get the home that I want? Because we know that's not caught up to get everything that you want. How am I going to say, well, you still have a two-year wait and um, home prices are going to go up another 10 or 20% and interest rates are high, but why? Why do I stay with you? Part of that conversation isn't just a text, isn't just a, um, a chat bot talking to you, isn't just an email. It's an experience. We also need to consider being where the customer wants to be. Customers still want relationships. They still want tangible assets. They still want to know where value and quality is in your selling equation. And then also thinking through brand differentiation. How are you speaking to your experience with your brand traits? I really challenge, does your builder have a true brand story? Because um, if you, because I, what I've noticed is many do not, they just say, well, we build on quality and well, we're going to go build a thousand homes in this region. Boom, boom, done. Um, and that may work. For some people that just are saying, I just need a home, but how do you build that long-term making marketing work better for you, smarter, not harder, create that brand story, create those experiences, create a great customer journey and have people come back to you simply for how the first handshake went really, really well. I may have to market to you less with less effort because I'm really thinking through it and not just making it a quick transaction. Well, the story and all that stuff is all good, but do we lose our entire sales center? I mean, how are we going to sell houses if we don't have a conventional sales center that we have? I mean, I we're know not that losing Apple, it. We're not yeah. losing because because Apple they've got this whole big old brain zone or whatever they call their mm -hmm. giant room there, but they still have a way to sell you the products that are all hanging on all the walls on the exterior. Yeah, so I'm not saying for it to go away. We're just rethinking how the space lives and how the space functions, and maybe how it's a combination of different functions, even in a master plan. So I think that'll come out. That's a great, really great question. Yeah, I'm not saying it's going away. We still have to sell. It's just, how are we creating experience selling through the process? Um, so on this slide, we're saying about going outside the box, we're rethinking, potentially even rethinking design center and sales center. Now, I love me a good design center, but, I'm also realistic. One, they're expensive. Two, there's a lot of product to manage in a design center. And three, um, as we potentially cut down choice based off affordability and packages for some builders, design centers may not be a fit for every builder in every market for every product. But is there a way to still showcase choice and option and design inspiration with a little bit of the choice that you have in your experience center? So also thinking through how are you using mixed use space for experience, not just come in, sit at my table, get my collateral, maybe look at a plat map. And yes, there's like traditional on the wall foam core plat maps out there. I've seen them cringe. Um, you know, it's not just about like, let me find my lot and go walk through my trap fence. It's how do I have some experiences in this space, get to know my salesperson, explore information about the community and be comfortable. How do you bring your other associates into the brand exchange as well? I was just touring in a community a few months ago and noticed they had sales associates in one building, they had a sales center, and then they had an amenity center with salespeople. And I felt like this very like choppy experience. And then you went into each one and it didn't even feel very activated because you didn't have a lot of people in a communal space. You know, is it necessary to, and that was a bigger master plan, but was it necessary to have it so pulled apart or could you bring people together um, thinking through your vr uh, virtual reality inspired showrooms in your virtual reality uh, induced creativity you know the pandemic pushed more more and more people to shop online and consumers have been appreciating that for its convenience but really there's been a drawback with not being able to touch and feel products people still want that 
we still get a lot of migrating um, buyers that will buy online without touching and feeling. But a lot of them, if they can fly in or come come walk a couple framed homes or see something, that's going to usually turn the dial for them quicker. Um, and we have a way to do more with augmented products and virtual reality products online when we're selling. And then also when we're bringing them into the sales center, depending on where we are at construction. So it's not just about having this electronic flat map or you know, a plat map on the wall, but it's really entrenching your consumers into that experience that's playful and giving people a lot of design tools and inspirations. Um, well, another I, area, oh, go ahead. Um, and let me cut you off just for a second because um, you, you touched on something that actually is very near and dear to my heart. You know, mm. when you're talking about virtual design centers, it costs a lot of money, not just to carry the note of that dirt that you have the structure built on and have all the, the physical pieces there, but you've got to constantly keep that updated. And there's some fantastic visualizers out there. I mean, yeah. I know that Outhouse produces them, Rendering House, Focus 360, Alpha Vision. I mean, there's there's not a digital asset provider out there that doesn't have some sort of tool uh, mm -hmm. that can be util utilized both in a virtual environment and even in a shared environment. You can still have some of those samples to show the difference between, you know, yeah. a, a, a hardwood floor versus a, you know, a porcelain tile. And you can actually let people touch and feel that. But mm -hmm. you don't have to have every sample. Now you can show them virtually. Yeah. in on a touch screen right there in, in the model home even that yeah. you already have to build anyway yeah there's in like mood boards for example are really popular i think a lot of people know what a mood board is from pinterest which is a collective of different fabrics colors textures fixtures things that really create the style and mood for your home you know you can create an area for customers to take big samples and play and create their own mood boards um in like a real life setting and maybe there's a video wall that has compositions of some other customers that have come through your experience center. And I, you know, I put this tile with this carpet, or I put this light fixture with this paint and get some ways to stylize because people love to see what other people are doing. It's why we spend so much time on social media. So how do we bring some of those experiences into an experience center where I'm, I'm there because I want to buy. So how are you creating the experience that's really creating to those meaningful aspects that I want today in my home in my home buying journey. Um, so the next slide, some things to what do um, what do we consider as we're creating and thinking about our new sales office of the future. So evaluating your process and really thinking about your customer journey. We know as marketers, I'm assuming there's a lot of marketers on the call today. Um, we know as marketers that they're starting their conversation digitally online, first handshake with the brand typically. But then once they come in, what do you want that to be? We know the customer's coming in way more educated than they ever have. They already know, may know they want lot five, um, what elevation they want, how much they're going to put down, um, thoughts on how much they want to upgrade, all kinds of different things. But how are you going to take that information and take them through the sales experience and educate them about the community, educate them about your value proposition, educate them about your build process, in a setting that really ties to where they were virtually online and was that online experience enough to get them to you in the sales office with enough information so think through your marketing path and the tools you're tying online to your sales center remember there's a lot of ways to integrate that also think about your service versus your product what are you representing how are you relationship selling in the process how are you talking through your build, your construction, your team, everybody they're going to work with on the service side versus the product? Um, thinking through the experiential society, thinking through there are emotional connections to this purchase. We all know that. But how can you tie people to that sense of place in the community? Thinking about how they can curate and personalize their home in an experience center versus what you may have just a non-sexy trailer or non-sexy uh, two-car garage that just has a table. How do you allow them to curate a sense of personalization in their home buying journey? And last but not least, think about the new ways to sell. Um, I, I kind of love this, this three tagline. Convenience is the new sell. People want convenience. Teaching is still a best sell and interactive is the smart sell. If you're doing those three things, that means you're striving towards being different and cutting out of the core of how we've done business as marketers in the home building. So always kind of think of those new ways. What am I doing to push the bar for convenience, teaching, and creating interactive experiences for your customers? 
And to anybody that is a Joe Dirt out there, trailers are sexy. Jennifer said something very, very harmful to our souls today. Trailers are sexy. Maybe I like to make them are. extra sexy, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> so, excuse me. Um, so the next slide, uh, life's, <clears throat> sorry, I might lose my voice here. I'm going to try not to. Lifestyle shifts and brand engagement. So there are some imminent lifestyle shifts that will change the experience of home. Again, I hope you guys really listen to this because I am looking at this holistically as I of the consumer. This stuff does affect what people expect and how expectations are changing and how lifestyle shifts are changing are going to change what people are going to expect out of that brand engagement. So right now we've got generational shifts. We've got a lot of cross influence between lifestyles and ways people live. Well, the, the fine line is getting finer between what millennials want and active adults want. Um, I trained with one of my very good friends, Deborah Blake, for many years on the differences between active adult millennials, and they have just blurred. They want so many of the same things. We are aging slower as a population. We're trying to stay younger, which is awesome because we're all aging. Um, so we have to think about the generational influences and how those are changing and how people are living. We have to think about space changes. We saw this with the pandemic, people wanting to, to use different spaces in their room, in their rooms, in their offices, and how their homes live is different. Um, localism, finding a sense of place, really understanding how their home connects with the rest of their community. There's a sense of renaissance, the new era of tech. And then there's relevance, like the intersection of community and commerce and having a meaningful way to tie to the consumers of the future. How does the exchange of services you know, affect and impact me? And what's important when I'm purchasing a home? These are things, these are like real things. I'm not just saying them that will affect what people expect out of their, their purchase. And why as home builders should we offer anything different? Rentals, multifamily are pushing the bar and meeting the consumer where their trends, where their wants and their needs are. We're selling 500, 600, 700,000 homes, dollar homes. We've got to meet them with where they're wanting and where their lifestyles are shifting. <coughs> Next slide. I'm going to lose my voice, Kevin. Don't lose it. Don't lose it. Don't do it. Bringing it back. All right. So this slide, I think, is fun. This is kind of part of that um, inspiration and why we're talking about it. Retail, okay? Think about any retail experience you go, even restaurants. If you have an amazing restaurant experience and you go to one that's not, maybe that ama amazing experience, whether it's Chipotle and how the service person was or it's a fine dining restaurant, you're creating all of these expectations and what you want and what you deserve. So it's important that we look at what consumer experiences are happening in retail abroad. So a great example here, um, Rolls-Royce. So they create their, like, this is one of their newer flagship um, London showrooms. It's a very immersive client experience. And what they're doing, what they're saying is that they're setting the customer up to be the brand director. Hear that again, set the customer up to be the brand director. That means that you're letting them drive some of the experience. We're already starting to do it in the home building space with virtual tours and different ways for you to customize your home. But what else can we do and how do we take those tools and make them better? So when you think about Rolls Royce, this is a very interesting um, example. A Rolls Royce vehicle sells for anywhere between 300,000 and like $450,000. I'm never gonna buy one, <laughs> let's just be true. But they only deliver 5,500 globally in a year. They will spend over six figures clearly on a brand experience to come in, pick that car, feel, feel, the, ex feel the excitement, have an immersive experience, for one purchase of three hundred to four hundred thousand dollar car, and they deliver five hundred. We, as an industry, delivered over seven hundred and seventy thousand homes, new homes, last year. And how many of those were sold out of a sorry, unsexy trailer <laughs> or a two car garage with a small table and a plat map on the wall? Why is it different? It's a question to ponder. 
Um, you know, and this is something that people live in versus a car that you're just driving. A um, couple other examples here, Glossier, um, it's a, a makeup store out of Los Angeles. They, instead of having a bunch of product displays, are creating communal gathering areas for people to try on product together, to talk about them, to interact about them. Um, <clears throat> Samsung's Bespoke Studio is a virtual showroom on their website where they can go in and create you know, different colors and mix and match with all of their different appliances. And then Maker and & Son, that's the example in the top right, um, has built a ultimate bring it to me experience where they have a fleet of, um, you can design home, but they bring a mobile unit to your home to sit on furniture. And then there's a lot of tech in the, in the vehicle. So you can mix and match and see more information, but you get to sample some of their um, furniture. So again, if these other retailers are going outside of the box, why can't we? So uh, we actually have a couple of questions. Uh, one is from Mark, uh, and he's actually asking how a lot of what you're talking about is is revolving around interior logic or interior uh, design aspects. What about exterior materials such as hardscapes? How do you how do you put that into a design center? How do you incorporate that? Sorry, trying not to lose my voice, working really hard. So um, are we talking just about like exterior aesthetic? Exterior aesthetic or outdoor living. I mean, how do we, I mean, because virtually, I mean, could, you could show some of that on, a, you know, like a rendering or of uh, animation, but how could you actually have that be tangible in that non-sales sales center? Well, that's, I mean, some of the best, I just actually toured um, in Rancho Mission Viejo last week, one of their new communities, and it was two semi-trailers that were put, or like semi-looking trailers, but they were modular. They, look, they were like the size of trailers and all the glass doors like opened up to the outside and it really brought that inside, outside, outdoor living space, a lot of like metal lattice and trees. So it created cover and shade. And obviously you can do that depending on climate, climate conditions and where your sales office is. But that's absolutely a, a trend is how to create nature. We're gonna talk about biophilic spaces are really important right now. People connect to nature. It's a sense of calm. It's a sense of well-being. So anytime you can bring nature into the interior design, open, outdoor, indoor, and looking at those eco-friendly different ways of using ex exterior materials to build your space um, are all important. And the consumer's looking at that. How are you going to reuse the space? Are you going to tear it down? Is it become, going to become an event center? There's a lot of different ways to look at the exterior of your sales center um, to, to continue to make it viable and useful in your community um, where most builders will create a home with the two car garage and then just you know turn it, flip it um, and sell the home, which is also very economical. But is there a way to build the price and the cost into that sense sales center to become an event center that adds more value to the community versus just another home you're selling at the end of the time at the community? And Cheryl brings up a pretty good point. It kind of goes into one of my questions um, that a Rolls Royce selling for 300, 500 grand. I mean, that's cost more than Cheryl's townhouse. <laughs> um, so obviously they have some revenue that they're pulling from that equation to cover the cost of this fantastic sales experience. How does a home builder that maybe is building spec homes or building, you know, first time buyer, you know, <clears throat> no those homes, how are they going to be able to afford to create a, that kind of cool, kitschy uh, sales environment that uh, that you're speaking about. Yeah, no, that's a really good point. Um, it was a good compare and contrast and a totally understanding that not everybody, I was speaking generally that we've seen prices go up. So we are selling a lot of homes between $400,000 and $500,000. And we know as we're looking at more affordable product, there may be some, instances in this presentation where you'll see ideas that we can still create some unique attributes in a smaller sales center. Some of these sales center ideas could cost that we're going to go through, could have elements that could really up the cost to, you know, $100,000 or even $200,000, but maybe those are for master plans with a really long timeline 
where you can bake the cost into your cost per roof over the time for time frame of the community and still really sell a great experience in more of your master in more of your smaller communities with affordable product townhome product maybe you're just thinking about ways to create that indoor outdoor experience with you know an op open door into an outdoor living space that makes it feel larger maybe you are going to invest in a technology piece that has some great, it's maybe for affordable townhome, I'm thinking you've got more of your Gen Z millennial, and you've got a social media wall that shows some of the people moving into the community and some of their, you know, favorite designs or attributes of the home. There's little things you can do still in a small space to open it up, show it's technologically connecting to the customer and connecting to the wants and needs of what that customer is looking for with healthy lifestyle, biophilic spaces, technology, um, and just a more comfortable place to sit and talk about my home because it's still a nervous, anxiety kind of filled and exciting time for someone to be, whether they're in a smaller garage or a bigger experience center. That's a good question. Boom. Well, it was only partially mine. I can't take all the credit. Cheryl gets most of the credit. But if it's Cheryl Halflich, then we're already <laughs> talking soon. So we're going to go off. On, we already have a meeting to chat. <laughs> all right. So sorry, I'm going to try to, are we good on time? Yeah, totally good on time. Yep. You were okay. 30 minutes in. Okay. So um, next slide. Take another cup of coffee. Thank you guys. I sound awful and my voice is fading. So I'm doing my best. So consumer of all things. So this is an interesting fact. One in four consumers globally are interested in virtual experiences from culture to travel to fitness. So we have to keep that in mind. One in four. One in four people want virtual experiences across a bunch of different stuff. So we got to keep that in mind as we're building our marketing plans, as we're building our, building our budgets for technology, because I know all you guys out there, if you didn't build it yet, it wasn't, wasn't budgeted. We got to look at next year. Keep that in mind. And there's a prediction um, by Gartner that consumers will spend at least one hour a day in the metaverse by 2026. I have this love-hate relationship with metaverse. I'm not really sure what I think about it yet, but people are already predicting in just a few years, really, that they're going to be spending considerable amount of time. So what does that mean? We need to start to understand it. We need to know, again, this is a sign that people are looking at virtual experiences. They're looking at seamless experiences. They're looking at ways to find convenience and plug in when I want, just like you can right now on your websites, hopefully. Um, you can plug in and have experiences online with your brand. How do we plug into those same experiences? I looked online. I found some of my favorite features of the home. Now I'm in your experience center. Can we pull those up? Can you? You know, are there integrations that you're doing and looking at vendors that can integrate and pull up the same platforms in your sales experience versus online? So think, keep that in mind. And as consumers are also wanting time savers, you know, there's a, why send a consumer to a bunch of different places for a bunch of different touch points? In this example, you know, Walmart's been testing out virtual shopping. Again, I'm, I bring these up because it's where the consumer is being trained outside of our home building experience. I think it's really important to keep in mind. Okay, next slide. So how do we innovate? So right now, you know, we have laptops and we have tablets. So hopefully you're thinking through different ways to integrate your consumer, customer facing technology, you know, on the sales floor in your guest experience. If you're not, maybe it's time. Um, you know, iPads are technology, some technology is getting more affordable. Is there a way that your consumers can be taking, or your sales teams can be taking iPads through their, their tours, bringing it back to the consumer uh, experience center, making notes on the iPad, letting the customer drive some experiences on the iPad with integrations in your technology, thinking through how you're using virtual tech. You know, again, if we're getting rid of design centers or we're going down to more packages, which I know more builders are, can we still give the customer a sense of choice by showing them how packages and how they get to pick some things in their kitchen or some things in their master bath, in their townhome, or in their um, even more affordable living space? There still has to be some level of choice and still really, really important. And in tech can help, you know, save on some of those costs by letting them play in a textual, in a, in a virtual tech space. 
And then think through your um, augmented reality and experience apps. There's different vendors out there starting to play with that, but think about how you can pool some of those collaboration tools with shoppable models, which I'm gonna talk about in a second, um, Pinterest and thinking about how you can like, share, save, seeing what your community's doing in a space online or space in your, in your sales office. Some of the ideas I have are inspirational and some of them I think are very tangible, but how do we start to ask the question of our vendors, of our agencies and our peers, what are you doing to make this experience different? That's how we innovate. So I like to say, look for inspiration in the question. You know, how do we innovate our sales centers? This is an example of a, some a really cool kind of like interesting ways that other brands, Nike running on a treadmill in front of a life-size park, right? Um, on Peloton, you can do that on a little screen, but thinking in the sales center, how do I get someone to try out things with my brand and really feel athletic in the space, even though they're in a sales center? And it's a great example. Um, as we know, consumers today are thinking about, there's a set of new rising motivations. So we need to think about that. They're thinking about service, personal care, trust and reputation of your brand, your product origin, and also thinking about health and safety. So we just need to look for inspiration in the question on how we create this innovation experience. Next slide. So shoppable models, I think a lot of people are hearing this. Um, the home building industry, several um, of the larger builders, I think, have started to play with the concept of shoppable models. You know, it's uh, we, we actually were wowed by what Modsy is doing with their shoppable model. A yeah. builder can literally monetize their entire staged <laughs> home with all the furniture that's in Modsy and add it to the sale, add it to the cart. You know, there, there's various options. You don't have to do all or nothing, but you can do various pieces of it or just get a commission anytime you're bought from that source. Yeah, it's it's a missing piece in the equation that as marketers and sales professionals, we know that people will come in um, and say, oh my gosh, where did you get that couch? I want to buy that couch. And the salesperson's like, I don't know, merchandising put it in. <laughs> um, but we also know from heat maps and just studying consumers that consumers also tend to look at the furnishings, one of the first things that they're looking at too. So not thinking through that part of the customer journey was kind of a bad on our part. And now it's becoming more of a realization. So um, in last year, I launched House Inspired Homes with Builders Design and House, and we did the same, uh, a very similar concept where you could go through and shop the model, pick up the tag on the furniture, and shop it and go back to house later and experience different collected styles for your home and purchase it. And the, the important part here is, is we're as builders able to inspire our customers and build a wider customer path. And another larger, another larger home builder I talked to about their program, they were, they were prototyping. They said, we're not in, and this is a, a builder that cares about their customers. They said, we're not in it for the monetary side we're in it because it's building a richer experience and we're giving our customers tools for another area that's important to them. And it's further customization and personalization of their home that we can't fulfill on our own. So we're giving them tools. And I think that's the right answer. Um, and again, we're now making more of a brand love experience with that customer because we said, here's more ways for you to personalize your home that might make it easier smarter, not harder marketing to get that customer to buy their second home and third home. So we're just thinking through their journey for them. So another way to think through and integrate that into your experience center, maybe they can go back and get, go and play with the furniture settings. Fine. I love the bricks and sticks, love the floor plan. I want to see if I want, you know, a curated farmhouse, modern, contemporary, boho, whatever styling and let them play, let them stay longer, let them build more of a relationship with your brand. Next slide. So considering the possibilities, again, this is a really cool kind of futuristic um, screen. We're, we're, we're kind of daydreaming a little bit here <laughs> with different ideas on how we can create these experience centers. If you go to next slide 14, the next three slides, we talk about good, better, best um, floor plan designs for, for your garages. So in this particular one, um, this is maybe like a good, just a, a very kind of simplistic, good example where you can still have your traditional graphics on your builder story, but maybe you're thinking about different ways that you can showcase, um, 
you know, through through virtualizing and bringing that community sense around screens, either around on touch tables, um, and show them different ways that they can customize their home workspace, or they can customize their kitchen space, or they can maybe customize their outdoor living space and make it collaborative. This isn't a very big space, but as you can tell, when you're thinking about bringing in how you bring in the tables for a collective workspace, uh, where you can maybe get ideas from others and you still have the technology, it's a good use of a two car garage that's not just coming in and there's graphics on four walls, a little collateral holder, and maybe a flat map. It's just thinking about using some of your materials differently. And I know some builders are doing this. But Jennifer, on that example, where's my tower of uh, floor plan brochures uh, slicks? And, and where's my desk where the, the person can sit and act, act like they're working when they're just waiting for the next <laughs> victim to come through the door? Well, where's that on this map? Yeah, yeah. You know, we're getting rid of paper because more customers don't want paper because you know where it ends? the floorboard or the backseat of your car. Um, and hopefully they're saving preferences and you're helping them say, we're more advanced. We have digital information. We'll email it to you. It's in your portal online. Um, it, everything is really moving to more digital and that supports people that don't really want all the waste of brochures. Now, sure, you could still have some in a small rack or something for some people that still want the tangible. But I think most of us as marketers are seeing the the hard copy pieces are are diminishing. Yeah. Um, and, and hopefully your salespeople are walking around with those iPads and going to the touch screens for that interaction and not um, sitting in a back room with um, with no doors and no windows and hiding and playing Minecraft or something. <laughs> solitaire. Endless solitaire. Endless when solitaire. Be, when they should be reaching out to their, their prospects. Anyway, that's yeah. a different story. Yeah. So, um, and then our... Our next one is our better. So for better, and you know, yes, costs can start to increase here. Some of this is a little bit, will be a little bit daydreamy depending on where you take technology, but how do we, um, you know, style and add augmented reality, kind of think through that, adding style and augmented reality and thinking about room for people to explore. So we wanna add a sense of hospitality. We can learn so much from the hospitality side and actually, talked with the with the CEO um, in multifamily the other day and I was like wow you know the multifamily industry is so innovative future thinking their tools that they use to to engage their consumer they really know like the up and coming generation and he's like yeah and you know who we look to hospitality so it's interesting how all of these different industries kind of look to somebody else for inspiration so always keep that in mind and I think we can look at hospitality too Think about how you can engage through hospitality with curated coffee stations, you know, tea bars, juice bars, not just the 50 pack uh, water, Costco, Sam's Club water bottles that you have like smashed into a corner, you know, spend a couple extra dollars on like a nice coffee and then not even just a Keurig, maybe go up a little bit. You again, it depends on your price point and what you're selling and everything, but there's ways to, again, bite off little bits of this and do it a little bit differently. Think about your creative enhanced visual displays. You know, maybe you have more digital displays in a smaller space and less, less printed. That was an issue I had years ago where I felt like I had so much storytelling I wanted to do and not enough wall space. And when we, and this was back in, 2004 at the beginning of my career where stuff wasn't so digitized. Now I can let the customer pick and choose what they're interested to interested in and, and maybe engage in those displays versus those paper foam, foam core kind of traditional displays, which are still out there. Um, but think about how you can, you know, rally around technology and, and, and make it playful. You know, in this particular floor plan, if you're using um, virtual reality, um, some of the glasses and things are coming back or a little bit better. Are you giving people space to explore or walk around with an iPad, things of that nature. Think about how you can use that space. <clears throat> Next slide. <clears throat> so this is one of the most, or kind of like a best example for a two car. And this one could be pretty, pretty lofty, but um, I'm also following a little bit of some of the cue from my uh, also interior design mentor, Joe Duffus. He loves the idea of these interactive, you know, builder story walls. The technology is expensive, not gonna lie, but I think we can continue to look at it and 
play with it, use it differently. Sometimes you can find a vendor that's really um, adaptive and, and creative in how they're using different screens together. Um, again, for example, I posted about it about a week ago, if you follow me on LinkedIn, but <clears throat> excuse me. I'm dying here. At Rancho Cucam um, not at Rancho Mission Viejo, we took two screens and put them together and found out a way with Focus 360. Um, that was one of their projects that I was visiting, where it was, you know, you could go onto these big screens and have two people navigating through maps. Kind of made me think of this example where we're seeing companies. Um, really think through how they can be innovative in really big, large screens. It pulls the customer in. There was only one piece of collateral in that entire experience. Everything was on big screens. Thinking through, I know it's kind of crazy, but how do you bring in virtual reality? It's kind of a silly with these boxes, but you know, is there is there a way that you can go into a kiosk that feels more virtual with three screens? I don't have all the answers here. Some of this is to inspire us to go back to our partners and to think through different ways that we could integrate new technology. And again, it's, it's creating community spaces. These are small, but it's allowing us to think through again, how do we use a virtual wall, a large screen wall and creating really comfortable setting. Well, Jennifer, uh, this brings up an actual mm -hmm. question. And I, and I love how you're showing, you know, these, and I assume Joe, these are Joe's designs because they're, they're beautiful. I actually love them by the way. Um, but, uh, you're showing examples of confining it to a two car garage. Why don't more builders use an entire model home as a sales center, as a place, you know, where the dining room is a conference table. Uh, the den could be where they have their sales people have their computers hooked up. Um, yeah. You know, the living room could be a, a, an interactive zone where you can actually see the various interactive touch screens. You know, Initially, what? No, it's a good question. Um, I haven't seen anybody take a home and, and create that experience center to that level. But it's typically because they wanna use the space to model it and to get the consumer to walk through the home in a modeled fashion and really pay attention to the features and functions. When it's more of an experience space, they're most likely paying less attention to the functions and features of the home. And they're switching gears more to the, the actual you know, what's in it for me with the experience, the, the community experience, learning about the process, the selling process and whatnot. Um, and, but as a, to, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. As, as a consumer, and this is just me more playing devil's advocate because I, I've been to like Athmore Homes up in the Boise market where they actually use a model home. It's not even a model home. It's, it's a model home that is literally a sales center. All their, mm -hmm. their salespeople are office there. The, the, the uh, division head is off the side of the house. Awesome. Um, and they don't use it as a conventional model because I guess they're going with the philosophy of once you walk through a model, you walk through another model outside of the furnishings. If you strip away all the furnishings, you're looking at the construction of the home and you can showcase that mm -hmm. even in a sales center, if you will. Yeah, no, I mean, there, I'm not saying that nobody's doing anything innovative. Um, and there's, that's a great example. Yeah. Um, and some builders even say, for my experience center, I'm not gonna use a traditional floor plan. I need something different because of how I'm creating my digital, digital topo tables and how I'm creating my lounges. Um, we did that in an active adult community that I worked on where we very intent, intentfully changed the floor plan of what we were gonna turn back to a home and go back in and add, add the walls to create the physical living space but we knew how we wanted the footprint to live for the experience center. Um, and it, you know, it was all glass and it was all open and it was communal. You had lifestyle director in there, you had salespeople in there, you had um, community residents coming in for coffee every day. And it was very much mixed use and a different footprint that we knew we could convert back once the amenity center was open. So I think those ideas are definitely on the table. Um, yeah. Today, I just showed two car because that's very traditionally what it, most builders what are see. using. Yeah, it's what you see it everywhere. And, and I like that this is showing a different way of thinking about it versus just that typical sales trap. Yeah, you, know. you just walk in and there's some stuff on the walls and a picture of the CEO's face and we love to build homes and here's some brochures yeah. and on your way. Um, and, you know, sometimes builders go all out on the amenity center if it's, you know, builder developer. Um, and that's great. But then again, think through 
what can you make cozy and technology savvy and comfortable in a smaller space if it if the sales center must be separate so and, and if you're building out a garage as a sales office mm -hmm. there's no additional cost to make it comfortable you know, just, you know, okay, builders yeah, are like, right. well, how am I going to pay for this? I guarantee if, if Charles is still on this thing, he's probably like, oh, it's just, I'm not going to, who's going to fund all this stuff? It doesn't cost you anything else. It's just different furniture. Instead of the same old office deskettes and yeah. wall units, you're putting in the comfortable couches and, and yeah. maybe a, a tablet. You could, you could buy a Samsung tag, tablet for what, 200 bucks? They're nothing. Yeah. yeah. So there's some, there, I think it's a good point. There's some like lofty ideas with crazy video screens and Oh, the cost to create more, bring more technology into my sales office. Maybe it's not budgeted now, but if we go to the next slide, um, I know we're sensitive on time, so I'm going yep, to try we're to close now. So yeah, wrap up here. But you know, curating home. These are some little things that we can do. These little wow. bites of the elephant as you're working through your sales center exploration that you can think of. So um, you know, creating these corner lounging, soft seating, dining tables versus conference table, um, you know, dropping in spaces for a hybrid worker, also knowing that most of us are remote workers, right? So now maybe I need a spot. I'm going to come in for an appointment with my salesperson, but this happened to me, you know, I'm also like, oh, I got to take a call in 20 minutes. Um, is there a spot that I can go to, to check in with a family member or something? Cause we're, we're living more virtual on the go. You never know what's going to come up. So think about some drop-in spaces. If someone has to make a quick call, that those, these are little things that we're just thinking of the space differently. It's not hugely expensive. The next, uh, the next slide is wellness is top of mind. This is, this is what we're going through right now. Some people are wearing masks, some people aren't. Some people are still, you know, hand sanitizer. You know, we've got new products that have come out, my, microbial counters and different things. Keep that in mind. Keep it in mind that people are more cautious. Think about how you're showcasing, you build with products that, you know, air filtration systems. Do you have an air filtration system that's showcased in your sales office? Are you highlighting that you put microbial, antimicrobial countertops in versus regular germy countertops? I know I'm just making up examples, but there's <laughs> ways you can show that health safety matters. You know, people, some people still want personal, personal space. I was standing in line ordering my Kidoba the other day, I sneezed. And this woman was like, I am standing 10 feet away from you. You know, what if I was selling to her? What if I was selling to her? She still wants some of that space. So some of these things, I think we still have to think about health, new norms and healthy living patterns. Next slide. Little things we can do in a sales office to make it feel like we care. Um, some other things, trend spotting, this kind of goes back to your some of your thought about exteriors. Um, there's like textures, home, home architecture, organic kind of or, organic sensory textures. Think through how you do a wall. Do you just do regular drywall or do you bring in some organic paneling or some intertwined you know, twigs, things to make things feel more natural or more texture, a concrete wall. These are just changing the decision on a material. It doesn't have to be super expensive. Um, there's some other good examples in here, but we're short on time. So I'm going to skip through, um, some other things to think about trends. There's tick, TikTok is a huge influence right now. Again, thinking through how people are sharing experiences. What if they had a really cool experience in your experience center, buying their home, using the technology, connecting to a Zen space. They gave me a tea instead of a water. <laughs> I met Joe, the salesperson. He was amazing. I'm sharing all that stuff. We got to keep where the consumer's going with their experiences top of mind because they're sharing it. Definitely have to think through that. Next. Um, so, in then integrating VR and design, I've kind of already talked about this, thinking through your experiences. One of the things we do with um, Builders Design is we're now also um, partnering on creating virtual experiences with our interior design and leading the way in those interior design conversations through our boundless products. So I'm gonna end with my, my voice is dying. <laughs> and <coughs> to look for inspiration in the question, you know, going back to that. And the last slide is really think about the generations. We're selling to all of these different generations. 
the norms are changing, the lifestyles are changing. How one of these younger generations comes into our sales office with someone who's had a different expectation is changing and they're all kind of crafting the new wave of what we build for, for customer experience. So let's like crack the code, write a new tape on how we create sales and experience centers. So I know you said you're closing with that, but we're not going to close quite yet because Jennifer, you have more information and we have just, we have three more minutes. So if there's any questions, hit us up uh, either in the comments or the chat. Uh, but where does a builder start? So when Casey Knight comes to me or Beth Bird, or they're like, man, I, I want to kind of redo some of this stuff. Are, are they just going to reach out to you? Or are they going to reach out to a Joe Duffus? Are they going to uh, go to their interior? Because you can't go to your sales team. The sales team wants it done the same way so they can just keep getting their commission checks. That's all they care about. They don't want change, but they will well, change. Well, I'm going to give them, I, I, I think that's true, but I'm going to give them a little bit more grace over the last two years. They've had to learn to embrace technology and they understand the buyers going online and getting a lot of information. And they know that people are going to talk about them through reputation. You know, they got to watch reputation management. I think they know it's changed. Um, but the marketing teams, yes, need to be thinking through this. You know, what I do in my role is um, I'm trying to, to meet with as many builders that are interested in taking the next step. Let's look at your brand. Let's look at your experience. Let's look at your budget. Let's look at where you're taking your product lines. You know, are you moving into more affordable? Are you moving into more luxury? Some still are. Are you moving into master plans? Um, and let's look at, there's no like one size fits all prescription here, but there are definitely levers and buttons of little things that we can do to make it feel unique, to create that unique value proposition, to turn the dial on where your brand lives today. If you're that trap fence, two car boring experience and you want more, it doesn't have to cost an arm and a leg. It can, I've built, built those and I've also pulled back. So that, that's where they could, could come to me for like, how do we start this conversation? Especially if you're planning for next year. All right. And Beth agrees 100% by the way. I don't know if you're watching the chat like I do. I watch it like a hawk. Well, Jennifer, talking. <laughs> you are amazing. Um, obviously, if anybody wants to get in touch with you, Jay Cooper at buildersdesign.com. That is not builder designs because they build websites. These guys are interior designers, different people. Buildersdesign.com. Uh, and thank you for your time today. Uh, we 100% appreciate it. And this is true that we do have to change the way we do things because uh, the same reason you don't want to walk into a used car dealership and deal with a leisure suit Larry is the same reason that your people visiting your model homes don't want to have to be channeled through that sales trap because that's what they view it as. It gives them a, the heebie-jeebies when they walk through those things. So uh, consider some of the points that Jennifer made. Uh, this will be made available so you can uh, get this recording here uh, probably either today or tomorrow. Uh, we can go from there. So Jennifer, thank you again. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. And I'm Kevin White's with Outhouse. Thanks for joining us.